Welcome back to Tech 24, coming up. In this edition, we'll be heading to Israel for the next big idea in tech. A festival there draws hundreds of startups and venture capitalists. Our team on the ground reports on where the nickname Startup Nation comes from. And later in the show, we'll be testing the Croquis, a French artistic tech innovation that calls itself the tracing paper of the future. Use it as a guide for drawing, coloring, painting, and even sculpting. That's with Dan and Jay Cattlecar. From Silicon Valley to Silicon Wadi, Israel is a growing presence in the tech market, with tech representing 75% of the country's industrial production. The Start Tel Aviv competition is celebrating its fifth edition, drawing hundreds of startups and venture capitalists to network, sell and invest in the next big idea. Pierrick Laurent and Iris Mackler went to find out why Israel is being called the startup nation. Yael is one of hundreds of tech entrepreneurs in this Tel Aviv space. She moved here from Paris this year to fire up her startup. Here I'm surrounded by lots of startups. Over there, there's an app for dog dating. Over there, they're working on an app that reads musical notes. The startup I co founded is called Nutello. It's a technical innovation that will scan your body in 3D, accessible to everybody through a mobile app. This app has uses from scientific and medical to shopping. You can order clothes online with confidence from now on. Yael hopes that he or she will take this app from a concept to a business. I wanted to come here to see what the startup nation was like. After four months, I see that things here move quickly and people like innovation. Israel has a population of less than 8 million, but it's one of the top performers on the Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index. It has the highest investment in R&D anywhere in the world, proportional to the size of its economy. This is linked to a strong military base and a young population. There are over 5,000 startups in Israel spread between Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Beer Sheva, and the north of the country, and 90% of the population is connected and has smartphones. Tal Shoham is CEO of Evalero, an online event and ticket selling business. In three years, her tech platform has become a company, capitalized at over one and a half million euro and growing. Having a startup in Tel Aviv means that you can make more with the same money than you could maybe in Europe and, or the US. And also the, this amazing access, you can really ask people that you know have sold billion dollar companies to meet you and guide you and 99% they would say, sure, let's meet up tomorrow. 2014 was a record-breaking year for Israel's tech industry. Startups raised almost a billion euro. According to Israel's first innovation report, 2015 will be even better. Dan and Jay Cattlecar is on set with me for more. Dan, tell us, how is it that Israel has fostered this kind of technological innovation? Well, Shona, there always has been a great emphasis on uh, defense-related research and development projects, which eventually lead to cutting-edge technology in non-military applications like healthcare, telecommunication, and other civilian sectors. At the same time, Israel has the has the highest per capita venture capital investment. It also has, uh, you know, it invests four percent of its GDP in research and development, which is by far the uh, largest in the world. And to add to this, most many uh, startups, they, you can find their roots in the army, like one of the army units, which is now well known, called the Unit 8200. It has become a prolific incubator, you know, encouraging, uh, encouraging different startups uh, to foster uh, in the environment. At the same time, it's not just, a te it's not just uh, technology or telecommunications that Israel has taken lead in. As we saw, as we discussed in, uh, in our show two weeks ago, it has also taken new strides in desalination. It has also taken new strides in agriculture. So it's an overall technology uh, hub or uh, hotbed of technology. All right, thanks so much for that, Dan and Jay. Next, we head to Poland, where engineers are simulating terrain on Mars, designing and building the explorers of the future. Poland has gone to great lengths to develop its high-tech space sector since joining the European Space Agency eight years ago. At its 2015 Mars rover competition, robots guided from afar completed various tasks as we can see in this report. 
These Mars rovers are built for terrain many millions of kilometers away. But today, Hauncine in southern Poland is the training ground. 27 teams from universities around the world are showing off their rovers in the 2015 European Rover Challenge. Guided from afar, the machines have 30 minutes to complete four tasks. Pick up an object, measure a reactor's power parameters, obtain samples of soil, and navigate between craters using only a GPS. Many parts of our rover were made using 3D printers. These mechanical parts are mostly in the rover's arms, but when you look closely, you can see them all over. Unfortunately, one of their rover's wheels caught fire just a few meters after the start line. It's a small setback for the local team, though Polish skills routinely dominate international Mars rover contests, and Poles are among the world's top 10 global robot manufacturers. Poland's membership in the European Union and the European Space Agency is very recent. Before that, we had one or two generations of dreamers who would have wanted to work in the field of astronautics but weren't able to. Today, it's like the effect of a compressed spring that's just been released. The honorary guest at this year's competition is U.S. astronaut Harrison Schmidt. In 1972, he was the first civilian and the last man to set foot on the moon. Today, he is excited about future exploration of the Red Planet. Having explored a valley on the moon called Taurus Littro, I can think of all sorts of things that I would like to direct a robot now to go check out, to add to the information that we gathered on Apollo 17. Canada was the overall winner of this year's competition, securing both first and third place. But every participant is a winner when it comes to employment prospects. These days, robots are used by the army, police, firemen, and even anyone vacuuming a house. No need to shoot for Mars, then, for these engineers to secure a job. Dana Jay, um, how important are robots in exploring outer space? Well, so now, inhospitable terrain, harsh climatic conditions, these, uh, these conditions are not exactly meant for human expeditions, so it's not only dangerous, but it's also, it also costs a lot. As a result, ro rovers in the form of robots have been the heart of uh, planetary exploration, particularly to Mars. I still vividly remember it was, I think, in July 1997 when the uh, Mars Pathfinder mission landed on the on on the planet. Uh, the Sojourner, the microwave-sized oven, which started exploring the uh, red red planet and started sent, beaming back images. There was so much excitement to you know just to get those images. Uh, still remember clearly. So yeah, rovers have uh, always been uh, at the heart of the expeditions because of uh, the Basically daunting because challenges. Basically, they're the only ones that think that they can actually go there. Exactly. Yeah. For now. Yeah, for now. Um, now, how have robots evolved though over the years? I mean, you talked about the microwave shaped and sized yeah. one uh, a few years ago. Today, yeah. I mean, these are like completely In different. The SUV size. Yeah, yeah exactly. SUV size, much bigger. Yeah, the Sojourner, for example, it, it's been only 18 years now. Uh, it was the size of a microwave uh, oven. And now today we have the Curiosity rover, which is the size of a car uh -huh. or a mini SUV. It weighs 900 kilograms. It can roll over obstacles uh, as high as 65 centimeters. It can travel 200 meters per day on a planet which is, um, you know, millions of miles away. So it's quite an achievement. It's quite a big step uh, uh, for exploration. Plus, it carries so many extra tools in the form of a drill, powerful drills, scooping uh, mechanisms. Right, to, to take dirt samples and exactly. other things like yeah. that for the terrain. Right. All right, thanks so much, Dan and Jay. Now it's time for the test part of our show. Dan and Jay, today you've brought us the Croquis from a French startup company. Croquis in French means drawing, so I'm guessing it has to do with art. That's right. This is the second uh, drawing gadget in two weeks, which is a record for Tech24. But uh, the first one was digitizing your drawing, but this is a purely drawing assistant. So what it does, as you can see, it's a simple apparatus. Uh, there's a stand on which the top of which there's a tablet. Uh -huh. It's an Android tablet. Right now, the application for Croquis is available on Android. Then there's a semi-reflecting mirror. And once semi-reflecting mirror. Yeah, so what it does is once you start uh, the application, there uh -huh. are a set of drawings which you want to draw. You can take it from, you know, you can take a photo and uh, take, pull it out from your gallery. So you're basically copying a drawing that's already exactly. on the tablet. Exactly. It makes it easy, like complicated drawings, like, I don't know, some... Uh, 
portraits, you would really find it hard to even think of or imagine of, you know, attempting it, you can easily draw. Especially you... for people who don't know how to draw, like Like me, me as well. <laughs> so you can start, there's a, there's a drawing of a fish. Uh... Yeah, I can see. So what's frustrating so what you for do you is there you... at home is that you can't really see, but from my angle, um, so I'm looking at this, at this glass uh, slab, and uh, as Dan and Jay said, it's semi-reflecting, which means that I can see this image of this fish um, that's being reflected back at me, and so here, here's a pencil. At the same time, it's it's it, it appears on the on the paper on the blank sheet. Exactly. Yeah, the... So that, that image is on the on the paper, and so I just basically trace over right. this image. And, and now there's a small assistant in the form of this uh, switch. And you can and you can adjust the luminosity. Adjust the light. I can still see the image, even though my hand is underneath, so exactly. it doesn't really get in the way of my drawing. Yeah, it doesn't block, it's not like a projector, you know, in your light. Is this, is, is this, this seems very simple, like technology, I mean, it, yeah, this it's is been an, used for hundreds tech, of years. It, it's, it's so simple, and it's so elegant, and that's what it makes it so, you know, incredibly attractive, and it, it's quite cheap as well. Right now, in two weeks' time, they'll be, uh, you know, launching their Kickstarter uh, Campaign. project, mm -hmm. and uh, it will be available on Kickstarter for 89 euros. Did Last you do time it we, you remember with the eye sketch note, yeah. we didn't have a great time because our drawing skills are well, not our that good. Our drawings were not very but good. But here, yeah. it's a quite a complicated drawing, and I oh, managed to draw this fish in five minutes. Wow! Yeah. Not bad, huh? Yeah, turning into quite an artist I there, know, Dan yeah. and Jay. So yeah, personally, I, I love this. Love this. All right, guy. thanks so much for bringing us the croquis. Uh, that's the end of our show. But you can find us on Facebook or Twitter. Our hashtag is Tech24. We leave you with these images of a robotic bartender called Maker Shaker, developed by researchers at MIT. This elaborate bar is controlled with an app and makes the most precise cocktails. See you next time.